I couldn't wait for the Sega Dreamcast to be released in America, so much so that I ended up importing mine from Japan. You see, in the late 90s, I was importing most of my games anyway, whether it be for the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation 1, the Nintendo 64, and to an extent, so it only made sense that I would just import a Sega Dreamcast, and I'm so glad I did, because most of my favorite games are all Japanese imports. The Dreamcast got a lot of love in Japan. It got some love in America, too. There's some great games that came out in the U.S., but since most of my experience comes from Japanese Dreamcast games, in this video, I have 13 great, I think they're great, Sega Dreamcast imports that I think might be worth checking out. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. I love doing videos like this. Make sure you're subscribed. Click the bell icon. You don't want to miss out. I do about two videos a week. I like the new stuff like Switch and VR content, but I'm a huge fan of the retro stuff, man. To help me out in this video, I'm using my Striker DC. This is the new Dreamcast controller from Retro Fighters. No, I backed this on Kickstarter. This is my Kickstarter backer controller. However, if you're interested in yours, I do have a link in the description below. Might even save you a couple of bucks. One of the things I love about this controller right up front is that the cord actually sticks outward where the old Dreamcast controller had the port down here and you had to like kind of loop it around. It's kind of weird, awkward, right? The analog stick has a little divot right here, which is perfect for your thumb. The other Dreamcast controller kind of sticks out. It's textured, but I kind of like how this is feeling too. The D-pad doesn't have the textures like the original Dreamcast controller has, but it still works really well. Pretty typical button placement. The start button is nice and sleek, so you're not accidentally hitting it all the time. Two trigger buttons for your L and R buttons, whether you want to do the button or the trigger, that's up to you. Both of them will work for you. And it does have the VMU support. In fact, my VMU still has the original sticker from when I bought the Token Ritsuden 4, the New Japan Pro Wrestling game. Still have that sticker on there. That's my original. And it works just fine. Fits right in there perfectly. You can see the sticker coming out just a little bit right there, but you can see the entire screen is completely visible right in that window. And it's got to be like an 8-foot cord, too. I'm 6'5", and my wingspan doesn't even stretch out the whole cord here. Look at this. I love the fact that they're still making Dreamcast controllers today. Again, if you're interested in yours, link in the description below. The very first game I gotta show you right off the bat, I love this game, it does not get enough attention, super underrated, it's called Bomber Hehe, I think it's what it's called, Hehe. It's a game where you have to place detonations inside of an abandoned building and you get points by how much you destroy it. Now even though this game is all in Japanese, after you press buttons around a little bit, you'll get a feel for the controls and you'll be able to figure it out pretty quickly yourself. Now you have different kinds of detonations. You have these little bomb things that'll just give you a small little radius, some things that'll explode bigger in different directions. And you have your timeline here, and this is your set. This is like, you know, as it goes through the timeline, different explosions will happen at different times. Now this first building here has five floors. You can go through each of the floors, see what's going on you know, what works best for you, and just experiment a little bit too. You can always go back and do it again if you'd like. I mean, it's just fun to see what might happen, what would happen. I mean, it's just fun to blow stuff up, right? And this is the perfect opportunity for you to do it in the world of the Sega Dreamcast. When you're ready, man, let her rip. All right, all right, now I could do better. I can definitely do better next time, but you, know, you can you get a little feel for it, what's going on with this game. It's Bomber Hehe. I've only seen it on the Sega Dreamcast. Man, <laughs> these are the kind of games I just look out for. Something unique anyway. This is Trigger Heart Excelica, I believe it's what it's called, and this game is definitely one of the best shooters for your Sega Dreamcast. And like a lot of imports, there's a lot of great shooters for the Sega Dreamcast. So you start off by choosing your player. Different players have different kind of weapon abilities. And it's nice too because this game isn't as much of a bullet hell as so many other Dreamcast games. It has just about a right amount, just enough I think. One of the gimmicks behind this is along with your shooting you can also capture these enemy ships and you can use it for a shield, you can use it to ram into other ships, you can do whatever you want to do with it. You can actually capture these ships and use it to your advantage. And this is an ability that will come in handy a lot during this entire game. In fact, not only can you capture other enemies, but you can also use it to lock onto bosses, lock onto other enemies that are like maybe on the ground that you can't just pick up and maneuver. So as you're firing, you can still, you know, target them and then move around them and shoot in their direction and everything. It's great. It has that kind of fan service that's known for Japan, but hey, you know what? For an anime type game like this, man, I'm okay with it. This Trigger Heart Excelica way up at the top of the list. Another fun shoot 'em up, or maybe this is a cute 'em up, would be Rainbow Cotton. Now, the Cotton series have been around for a long, long, long time, and the Dreamcast version kind of takes you behind the character, almost more like a like a space harrier in a way. This game is a little difficult, mostly because you can't see directly in front of you. If you were see through a little bit, or maybe had a little bit of a transparency so you could see the enemies or see exactly where you're targeting, I think I'd like this game even that much more. But just it by itself, I think it's still pretty fun. 
I like that you can pick up these little power-ups and then use them as your bomb effect in a way for like other shooters have. I love the anime cutscenes. I can never get enough anime cutscenes in video games, even today. And the boss battles are just fun. It's not like you're fighting like a giant ship shooting a thousand bullets at you all the time like most other shooters. I mean, the bosses in this game, they're just fun. Rainbow Cotton's definitely another game to look out for if you're looking for import Japanese Dreamcast games. Now, Puyo Puyo Da is not your typical Puyo game. In fact, it's barely Puyo at all, but I'll show you what's going on in this game. One of the long lost genres of video gaming is rhythm games. Now, we still have a few rhythm games here and there. They come out when they can. But in the late 90s to early 2000s, man, they were all over the place. And this one's a fun one. So you got a great cast of characters, as you can see here. You choose whoever you want to be. And even though it has the Puyo Puyo name, this game actually plays more like Parappa the Rapper. Your enemy will go first, and then you go. And you have to do better than your enemy did. You can tell what to do by either the up, down, left, right, or those stars are your trigger buttons. You just hit L or R, that'll work for you. It's one of those games you want to watch the gameplay because it's kind of cute to watch them dance around, but you can't take your eyes off of the, the moves you have to do or the button combinations you have to press because it gets pretty crazy. You can also see in the upper corner, uh, the more better you do, the more Puyo pieces they get, and that's bad news for them. You want to make sure you, they get all of the pieces. You want to make sure that they uh, get more than you to advance in the levels here. The different stages have different songs. The songs are pretty catchy. They're kind of, I, I don't know if they're licensed or non-licensed. I don't recognize any of them, and I'm a huge fan of like J-pop, especially from the time. So I wouldn't doubt it if those were just kind of studio songs that they made for the game, but still a super fun game. I mean, it's Puyo Puyo Da. It could have been anything else. It didn't have to be the Puyo Puyo series. I'm glad it is, but man, it's just fun. If you're, if you're into rhythm games like I am, definitely one worth checking out. And this, my friend, is an SNK game that nobody's talking about. This is Cool Cool Tune. It is another rhythm game. I wanted to talk about this while talking about rhythm games, just to kind of get them out of the way, if you will. This one plays a lot easier, but it's still pretty fun. So in this game, you have your circle, and you can see when you have to hit your button right when it, you know, right when the circle kind of traps the circle, right when it lands on it. That's when you hit your button. Easy enough, right? Well, as the game goes on, then uh, where you have to hit the button might be, you know, either right in the middle of the circle or on the outer edge of the circle. Sometimes you have to move left and right between the middle to the outside to somewhere else to another direction and <laughs> it gets pretty intense after a while. You're doing your own thumb gymnastics trying to keep up with everything, you know? Again, another just kind of fun, cute, uh, it's, you know, it's cool, cool tune. <laughs> With a name like Cool Cool Tune, how could it be anything else? Has a lot of unlockables, and I think it has a replay value. This is Cool Cool Tune, again, from SNK. Where is my sequel to this game on the Switch, man? I'd buy it right now. Port this over to the Switch, I'll buy it right now. Admittedly, as much as I love Trigger Heart that you saw earlier in this video, this one actually might be my favorite shooter for the Sega Dreamcast. Now with Border Down, I like how it gives you the option. If you hold down your fire button, you just fire a steady stream of bolts right in front of you. But if you tap the fire button, if you tap the fire button, then you shoot out kind of these homing missiles. So you have to use that to your advantage, you know. I think personally I prefer the horizontal style shooter, kind of like a UN Squadron, and UN Squadron is one of my favorite shooters of all time. Um, but this one has the bullet hell that, you know, again, just the right amount, I think. Anything more than this, man, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm dead in the water, so to speak. Dead in the air, I guess. And there's something about just Dreamcast polygon graphics that I absolutely love. I can't place my finger on why or how or whatever, but just the colors, just the the energy of the game, man, I, I, I love this game. This is border down for the Dreamcast. Chaos Field, another fantastic shooter for your Sega Dreamcast. This one's definitely more arcade style. This game features multiple players with different shooting styles. You know, the guy with the bad posture, that's me for sure. <laughs> So one of those games, you know, just a lot of things happening, a lot of action happening. You gotta shoot them before they shoot you, obviously. I mean, that's how shooters work anyway, right? This game also features kind of like your sword, and your sword will kind of slash away stray bullets, which is really nice. It doesn't slash all of the bullets, just kind of the, you know, the most of the stray ones. Like bullet hell type stuff, it'll move them out of the way for you, not gonna have to worry about it. If you die, no problem, you can come back to life, you can even choose someone else if you'd like to see what else there's out there, you know? Maybe there's different strategies for different players for different stages, I don't know. And along with your shooting, along with your sword slashing, there's also this shield that will pop up and protect you for a little while. Not very long, but a little while. Just just enough. Hopefully just enough to save you, you know, <laughs> from having to continue if you don't have to. Chaos Field, it's one of those games that's also available on some other platforms, but I think it just plays best on the Dreamcast. I'm, maybe I'm biased, I don't know. Man, these two great shooters. 
what's the next awesomest game you could think of? Oh my goodness! What? Hello Kitty? Well, I mean, you'd figure on a console that literally had a Hello Kitty edition of a console. There are four Hello Kitty games, and we'll cover all of them just briefly here. Up first is Hello Kitty Magical Block. It's Pengo. Now, Pengo was a classic arcade game from Sega. Um, it featured a penguin pushing these ice blocks to crush the enemies. And there's also these uh, triple blocks where if you hit all of them together, then it'll you know make them temporarily frozen so you could hopefully you know get some extra damage on them kill them before you hate they hit you kind of thing now i don't know if the hello kitty games were meant to be budget titles i mean because they even they feel like apps today you know what i mean it's like they they probably could have done better with this but maybe they didn't need to it was probably targeted for kids but you know what <laughs> it's fun for me too i'm such a big fan of pengo from the arcade hey why not have the hello kitty version of pengo it's like they just took pengo and then put a hello kitty skin on it i'm cool with that hello kitty magical block man if you find it cheap why not pick it up we also have hello kitty lovely fruit park well doesn't that sound fun this game did you ever play spot the video game you know the seven up spot and they made a game on the nes that was kind of like a puzzle game not really Othello, but it was just a puzzle game. Well, what I'm getting at, this is this is Spot, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> you are the strawberries, of course, and your enemy is the other fruit, whatever that may happen to be. And if you move right next to you, you will duplicate your fruit. You can jump an extra block ahead, but then you sacrifice that fruit to move to the new space, and they don't duplicate. And if you happen to land on a space that has your opponent's fruit on any of the eight spots surrounding you, then theirs turns to yours. Simple game and concept, has some nice strategy, but anyone can play it, super fun. Fun on a two player. I'm gonna speed up the footage here. And you know, there's kind of just kind of a strategy tug of war. Like, you know, sometimes you feel like you're winning and sometimes, oh my goodness, now they're winning. And <laughs> you never know how it's gonna end until you get to the end. And I happen to have won this round, yay! All right, this is a fun one. I, I like games like this. I love Spot for the NES. So this is the, uh, this is the Hello Kitty Dreamcast version, why not? Up next, we have Hello Kitty Waku Waku Cookies. Waku Waku Cookies. I couldn't tell you what that means, but I can tell you this game is, uh, it's, it's all right, it's all right. But I still wanted to showcase it because we're talking about Hello Kitty games. You just have to get three in a row. That's all you gotta do. Now you can also stack these cookies on top of each other um, and that's fine. Uh, but so long as they're in a row, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be on the same, you know, first level, second level, just so long as they're, you know, the same color across of the same color, then they'll clear out. And these cookies duplicate themselves, or these cookies, you know, appear very quickly. So you gotta do as fast as you can, clear them out as quickly as you can. You can stack the cookies uh, three on top of each other, and once you do that, they're stuck. You can't pick up three cookies at a time. However, you can use that to your advantage and still clear, you know, a row of three. If you happen to have the three, then, then you know, they'll all be disappeared. Then you'll, you'll get all the points for all three of them, plus the other ones that are uh, that have cleared the line. Yeah, it's <laughs> there's a lot going on with this game. It's so simple, yet uh, these cookies, man, just keep appearing, keep appearing. It's hard to, uh, hard to, you know, <laughs> hard to stay ahead of the game in this game. Uh, pretty intense here <laughs> for a Hello Kitty cookie game. Are you kidding me? But I'm telling you, those cookies when they're stacked up three in a row and they're all iced with the sprinkles on top, those look good. Remind me of those frosted animal cookies. I'll never get sick of those. We have Hello Kitty Garden Panic. Now, when I first played this game, I was like, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. What's going on? What, what's what's this all about? I mean, I, I guess I'm doing it right. I don't know. Well, as it turns out, it's like Battleship. You're playing basically the big game of Battleship. So when you set your pieces, those are your flowers, and you have to launch an attack on their garden at the same time. Now that's a hit. So that means that I didn't destroy any of their flowers, but there's a flower, you know, either two or three of them in a row somewhere around that enemy. But we're just gonna play it around and see what else we can find here. And again, speeding up the footage here, you can kind of see what's going on. You know, they go, then you go, and you just, just like with Battleship, you gotta find out, you know, where all of their pieces are. There's a lot of uh, flowers on the playing field here. And when you finally hit all of them, you know, all in a row, or, you know, to two or three, or even the one, um, then they disappear. And then the flower wilts and dies and turns into a pile of dirt, which is... <laughs> this is almost a little sad. <laughs> You're dealing with flowers here. But still, fun, cute, puzzle game. I mean, part of this Hello Kitty series for the Sega Dreamcast. All right, fine. I do love my wrestling games, and especially the import wrestling games. This is Giant Gram 2000. It is the third All Japan Pro Wrestling game. The first one came out for the Saturn. There is another one for the Dreamcast. 
There is another one for the Dreamcast. In fact, the first one for the Dreamcast features uh, characters from Virtua Fighter, which is kind of fun. But this one, this one's the one to get for sure. This game does not play like if you've never played any of the All Japan games for the Saturn or the Dreamcast, it does not play like any other wrestling game out of the market. You have basically the three main buttons you gotta worry about. There is an attack button, a grapple button, and then kind of a maneuver button, if that makes sense. This game was an arcade game, so it plays like a very fast arcade game. Like some of these matches last less than a minute. So again, you can attack, you can grapple. Once you're grappled, you can kind of move around them, either to the side or to, you know behind them, try to do something there. Some simple button combinations, like either like you know forward in a button, or sometimes like down forward or forward down in a button might be a different maneuver. Um, I thought the graphics on this game were spectacular. I mean, I think they look great now, uh, but even, you know, back then for the Dreamcast, oh my goodness, I was, I was hooked. There's this awesome mode here, too, uh, that I'd love it if they incorporated this with new wrestling games. It's kind of a, uh, it's like reliving the past. So what happens is, as you're playing this game, every once in a while, a maneuver will pop up. And when that pops up, you have 10 seconds to do that move on your opponent, because that actually happened in a match yeah, that these matches are taking the place of. Unfortunately, it's in Japanese, so hopefully you can read enough Japanese or kind of figure out what the moves are just by looking at what the characters look like. It's like, oh yeah, I know how to do that thing, and you know. Um, but once you get the hang of it, I think it's really, really fun. The payoff is if you complete it correctly, it'll actually show you highlights from that exact match. Now, of course, nowadays we have YouTube. We can just look up the matches online. However, uh, for the Dreamcast, man, I was, I was so, I would love this part of the game. I was always referring back to the manual <laughs> to find out how to do certain moves. Uh, super fun. Frame Grind is your robot mecha fighting game from From Software. From Software made this game for the Dreamcast. I tell you how awesome it is. Quick story about this game. I purchased this game in Seattle from a place called Kicks Hobby. Unfortunately, it's not there anymore. Um, I was there just browsing, but somebody came in with a copy of Frame Grind, but because it was missing the back of the graphics part, like the back manual, I guess, um, they wouldn't accept it. So then outside, I was like, hey, well, if you're going to sell it anyway, I'll buy it from you. So <laughs> I still have it today. <laughs> and I'm glad I bought it from them because uh, this game is pretty awesome. This first part of the game, it's asking you questions. It's in Japanese. I, I'm sure there's a walkthrough now online telling you exactly what it says. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that depending on how you answer the questions, that's what kind of robot you're going to end up as um, when you start playing this game. Now this game does have a little bit more Japanese than I would like for most imports, but again, if you just click around a little bit, you'll eventually get to the part where you're beating someone up. And when I say someone, I mean another robot. So you got your playing field and you're shifting around and sliding around. You have your attack, your basic attack. And depending on how I answer the questions, it's like I have a mace, I'm cool, cool with that. You also fire a gun, you can also slide, you can jump, you do have your shield as well. And I don't know what it is about these mech fighting games that are like this arena style, but I'm, you know, I'm not even the biggest mech fan. And I love games like this. I just think they're fun. They're just fun to f play around with and have some fun with. I mean, it would definitely be more fun online, like as a two player or something like that. I would love it if From Software would bring like Frame Grind 2. <laughs> to, to the modern platforms in VR would be awesome, but you know, that's that's kind of a pipe dream. This game did feature net play at its time. I'm sure that's gonna close down for years. But if you're looking for another mech game that never quite made it out to America, this is from From Software. It's called Frame Gride with an R, Frame Gride. And it's neat. Check it out. And while we're talking about Sega, the Sega Ages collection on the Nintendo Switch, check out this link right here. Make sure you watch this video. There are some great arcade Sega games available right now and more Sega Genesis games too. Had the Dreamcast, it had to come from somewhere, dating all the way back to the Sega Genesis. Some great Sega Genesis games you don't want to miss out on. I'm not as familiar as the US Dreamcast as you might be, so let me know what are some great games to check out in the comments. I will see you very soon.